Welcome to part six of this Football Manager 2020 experiment. Thank you for the magnificent support on the first five parts. In part five, I said if you were able to get 300 likes on the video, then I'll do a part six. And you've absolutely smashed it. Over 1,000 likes just shows how popular this experiment series has been. And I'm really pleased because I found it really intriguing. It's one of my favorite ever experiments that I've made on this channel. And easily my favorite on FM20 so far. It's just been so interesting. Now at the end of part five, I said, if we were to do a part six, it would make sense to move Mr. Perfect, the star of this series, the star of many other series back to Chelmsford City. And that is what I have done. 70 years old now, his first season back at the club and he's managed to finish fourth. Of course, end of part five, finished on a bit of a downer because they finished seventh, of course, but back up into the Champions League places, just about on goal difference ahead of Sheffield Wednesday, who have done very well. It's great to see Chelsea City back where they belong, back in the Champions League. And that just still seems strange because, of course, in part one, they started in the Vanarama National League South. And Mr. Perfect, his perfect staff and the perfect facilities enabled them to get promoted in that first season. I thought I'd just have an overview of where we've come from so far at the start of today's video. And then I'm going to simulate all the way until the year 2100. So of course, first season, very successful, but it did take three attempts to get promoted from the National League before going up all the way to the championship within, well, three seasons, basically. Uh, unfortunately, relegated bottom of the championship in that first season, back to League One, but at the second attempt, promoted back to the championship. They survived just about three seasons before going up via the playoffs. Of course, we watched that playoff final, magnificent achievement. Two seasons in the top flight. Uh, unfortunately, in that second season, they were relegated back to the championship where they won the playoffs again. And since then, they have become a force to be reckoned with. It took a few seasons to establish themselves in the top flight, but not many in the grand scheme of things before suddenly European football beckoned. And they've won multiple things, of course. They won European Championships, well, Euro Cup, Euro Europa League, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and eventually the, the Champions League as well and the league. Um, but it did take a few seasons, but it is quite a remarkable achievement to only take, what, t under 20 years to become an established Premier League team with, these, with, with this experiment. And, of course, since then, they've gone on to be a worldwide footballing power, winning the league multiple times, if we just continue up. Um, of course, there was one particular manager was, that was very successful during this time. But if it, was, if it wasn't for Mr. Perfect, they wouldn't be here right now, I suppose. It was this period of success also coincided with them having a sugar daddy who just gave loads of money to the manager to, uh, to sign players, of course. So the manager at that time was... Theo Armstrong, who had an incredible period at the club. He's now manager of Arsenal, and Arsenal have been very successful on this uh, in this universe as well, I think. And unfortunately, since then, Chelsea City have really gone through the managers. It's not worked. Um, I moved Mr. Perfect back to the club, but he left immediately. I think he moved to Barcelona like the day after. No, he didn't. He just, he just left. It was, it was a bit bizarre. So I've moved him back for this first season. Where, of course, he's managed to win, oh, get into the Champions League, sorry. Didn't spend a huge amount of money, though, as you can see there. But I'm going to holiday 10 years now, and we're going to see what happens. So how long will Mr. Perfect stay? Where will Chelsea City be in the Premier League? Will, will they have managed to win other competitions? Let's find out. So it's now June 2080, and I guess the standout thing here, as you can see, is they've dropped a four and a half star worldwide reputation, but they are still a force to be reckoned with. They haven't qualified for the Champions League every single season, but they have quite a few times. Of course, Mr. Perfect led them to fourth in 2017, then dropped to fifth, fourth, eighth, third, ninth, second, fifth, fourth, sixth, and fourth most recently. They, d they don't seem to be able to sustain themselves in those Champions League places. In fact, they haven't managed to finish in the Champions League places two seasons in a row since back here it's, it's quite strange really what has happened so what happened to mr perfect then let's have a look we'll get rid of the caretakers so they have had a few managers he lasted almost four years i suppose but he was sacked he was sacked by the club um he, and interestingly he has become director of football at the club and also being caretaker manager 
whilst it, when these managers have been sacked. So if we do show the caretakers, this is when he was sacked. Uh, we then had caretaker come in for 14 days. Daryl Foster took charge. He's retired. He was very young when he was in charge of the club, as you can see there. And then someone called Robert took charge. He's now in charge of Stoke. Uh, we then had Bucero, who's now in charge of Bayern Munich. So obviously a, a good manager, but he was sacked. Uh, Gersic sacked as well. He's now in charge of AC Milan. So they've got rid of some really good managers. Mr. Perfect took charge for 15 days before the most recent manager, Lee Davies, has come in. But they've just not had any consistency, unfortunately. And as you can see, no one's managed to win anything apart from Mr. Perfect back when he was manager for that three and a half year period. So let's have a look at the competitions to see what they have managed to win. He actually won the Euro Cup for a second time. And they managed to beat Inter Milan in the final. So really good achievement there. Of course, they've won the Champions League twice. They've won the Euro Cup twice. They are an established force in world football. They've also managed to be runners up in the FA Cup most recently. But yeah, they've literally only won the Euro Cup in recent years. Runners up three seasons in a row in the FA Cup. That is very unlucky. Bottling it right at the end. A bit unfortunate really. Uh, Carabao Cup runners up as well. That's annoying. Of course they won it in 2067 but they were runners up in 2072 against Chelsea. So let's have a look at the current squad to see the quality uh, in the team. They've managed to qualify for the Champions League of course. But the best player at the club is Javier who is a French international, signed for £39 million from Barcelona. Very good player. He's good, really good. They've also got James Morrison, an English international, signed from Colchester United for £34.5 million. They've done well because they've gone up to the championship. There have been some interesting stories with other clubs, actually. We'll have a look at some of them in a second. But you can see there's some good players in this team. It's not as good as, as the glory days when they were winning the league, of course. And in the youth youth system, they do have players with potential. Ryan Lynch, 171 potential, has just come through the most recent academy. Uh, they've got a few players with, with decent potential as well, but one of them's 21, so I don't know if he's going to reach that. But he's a good player. The out on loan at Barnsley. Uh, an 18-year-old, German, he's got really good potential as well. So there's some quality players in the youth team still, which is good to see. But let's have a look quickly at some of the other interesting stories. Liverpool have actually won the league most, most recently. If we look at the past winners, you can see Arsenal had a dominant period, but Liverpool's first Premier League title for a long, long time. In fact, have they even what they haven't actually won it since 1980 something, have they? That is crazy. Have they not have they not won it? I think this is literally their first league title for ages. Have a look at this. Premier League. 1990 was the last time they won the top flight in England. 90 years later, considering it looks like they're going to win the league in real life this year, but 90 years later, they finally won the Premier League again. That is <laughs> incredible. But we may have spotted, I think it was part three or four, maybe part five, I don't know. One of the parts of this experiment. We, we actually saw them relegated. So we have a look at the domestic leagues. They've been in the Premier League for a long time, but they were relegated back in 2044, which is unbelievable considering it's Liverpool, for goodness sake. But they soon returned and returned to the top of the division, but they've only just won the Premier League finally after all these years. And it was on goal difference as well over Man City. So that's that's been an interesting story. Leeds are back in the top flight. They've been in the, the Premier League for a long time. Brighton have done extremely well. They've been consistently in the top flight. Uh, but yeah, top top half quite a lot of the times as well. I think they won the, the Europa League, did they? Sheffield Wednesday have done well. They've been promoted and really become a, a strong Premier League team. Stoke City were back. Spurs down in 14th. Man United down in 16th. That is, look at this. Most recent season, they were finished fourth. But other than that, it's been a terrible 10 years for them. This is the current England team. So they've got an Italian in charge. These are the, the recent managers. As you can see, there's lots of managers. Most of them will be regens, or all of them will be regens at this point, of course. We're in the year 2080, for goodness sake. There is a chump. There's a few chumps of City players in the England team. Ryan Mayo, a goalkeeper with 35 caps. Uh, Willie Mc, Mc, McAvoy, who's got 41 caps. Uh, and James Morrison, of course, who who you have already looked at. Let's have a look at the overall best team, actually. Best 11. How's that changed? So Sabuti's still up front. Remember him? He's retired. But 120 goals for Morocco in 161 games. Cracking player. Nathan, a Brazilian on the right-hand side. Really good player. 
Kuzmins, I don't really, oh, he's still playing for the club, that's why I don't remember him, a Latvian international, on the left, oh, Longwain, now, in part five, he was a seriously talented player, he's now 38, and he's retired from football, uh, but he spent pretty much the entirety of his career at Chelsea City, apart from one season at Crystal Palace, which was where he started, oh, that was, he was on loan, he was on loan, yeah, so he spent his entire career, one club man, at Chelmsford City, He's a director of football. He's obviously uh, not got a club at the moment. But he really did have a remarkable career. And he was capped 125 times. 90 goals for England. That might be a record. Let's have a look. No. This chap has the most goals. Uh, John Kosminski. 137 goals for England. That is sensational. Uh, but yeah, this, this Hongwein is one of the, is the best player that Chelsea City have produced, I think. Because he really was a quality quality player uh we can't can we have a look at his i suppose we can't see his potential or current ability because he's now uh, a coach but he really was a very good player for Chelsea city so many appearances this is just league stats at the bottom here by the way so you can add the cup appearances and goals onto that so he really is one of the stars of the series we've then got john perrier a frenchman in midfield escobido uh, a mexican international um, ben Martin, who's still currently playing for Champs City, England international, only two caps. Uh, we've got Shane Wills at centre-back, also still playing. He's moved to Saudi Arabia recently. So lots of new names. Xavier, who is uh, who was signed for £39 million, of course, really good player. And Carlos Prado, who's currently playing for Atletico Madrid. What a brilliant profit margin, by the way. I'm surprised he's in the overall best 11, having only spent three seasons at the club. But it might favour recent players. I don't know. There's been some really good goalkeepers playing for Champions City. Uh, Yang He. He's uh, on the bench. Ben Gold. I remember him. George Roberts. Some of these we can't click on because it's not saving them. Luke Cameron, of course, was a real star for many years. Uh, and this chap, Karadag. I think he was really good as well. Yeah, really good. 110 goals in 150 games for Champions City. I always forget about this screen. You can basically look at all other players by season that has played for Champions City. It'd be good if there was like an overall list. I don't think there is one where you could just see everything. But uh, I'm going to upload this save file. I'm going to upload the 2100 save file. You can download it yourself and take a look. If you find anything really interesting that I haven't spotted, you inevitably will. Then stick it in the comment section or tweet me, except whatever you want to do, um, because it really is fascinating. So we've got 20 more years to go, of course. Uh, so we're going to have a look 10 more years into the future. By the way, the current manager playing a 4-3-3. I don't think there's anything else to look at. Oh, facilities. So this is the current situation. 61,566 all-seater stadium. Uh, finances of the club are as so, so there's no sugar daddy at the club at the moment, um, and the training and youth facilities are currently 19, so it's almost perfect. And the staff members, I've really brushed over this, haven't I? Mr. Perfect is director of football, and I have actually made Mr. Perfect director re resigned, and he was still out there, no club. So I thought, why don't we make him the technical director? It makes sense to bring him back. So about halfway through. 2074, I uh, moved him back to the club as the technical director. So Mr. Perfect, the original manager, is director of football. Mr. Perfect, director, technical director. And we've still got a few other chaps here. So Mr. Perfect, physio, at the age of 80, is the head physio still. We've got Mr. Perfect, an anal analyst, sorry, who's still here. Now this, I could never change this to 20, so he's never been perfect. But it's really weird. It's almost like you can't have 20 on everything. If I do that... Good, puts it back to 13. I, I put other numbers in. It just won't let me change that number. It's really strange. So he's always had those attributes. Um, and I think that's it. Everyone else has left. But if we look for perfect, just search the name perfect, loads of people will come up because we've now obviously included these names on the database. So it does throw up like Stephen Perfect Physio 2. He's not actually related to perfect physio too but it's just an, an available name now so it's really funny i like to imagine it is actually the offspring or grandchildren of of our perfect staff members but unfortunately it's not Ale alejandro perfect uh miss oh that's one of our guys connor perfect scout too he's actually a coach john perfect fit <laughs> it's just really random and quite funny roy perfect phil perfect is my favorite just alliteration love it um, Callum Perfect Fit as well, 15-year-old region. So it's quite random, 
but I, I just love the fact that there's just so many of them out there now. Anyway, let's simulate another 10 years. Here we go then. June 2090, Chelsea City still a four and a half star worldwide reputation club. They haven't managed to win the league, unfortunately. But as you can see, they have been pretty consistent this time. Yeah, they've been a bit more consistent and they've slowly progressed. So they did drop down to eighth the year after qualifying for the Champions League. There was just no consistency for that 10-year period. So eighth, eighth, seventh, sixth, seventh, fifth, sixth, fifth, sixth. And for the first time in 10 years, or 11 years, not sure how many exactly, they have qualified for the Champions League by finishing third this season with 75 points. So unfortunately, they did drop out of that top four for a long time, but they've slowly made progress, qualifying for the Europa League most seasons as well. And if we have a look at this, we can see Mr. Perfect did take charge as a caretaker manager again. In fact, he took charge a couple of times, but he has now retired, retired at the age of 82. What a, what a career he had. 47 times he managed to win something. So, of course, a lot of these were with England, Man City, PSG. We never saw him take sort of England to a World Cup, did we? we he never won a World Cup because he uh, became manager of Man City, then PSG, Atletico Madrid, Bayern Munich, Liverpool, PSG again, before we made him manager of Chelmsford City once again, before becoming director of football. And, and he did that himself. I didn't even make him director of football. We just decided, well, the club decided to to move him upstairs, I suppose. That's a really fascinating and incredible career. Isn't there a way to look at like the whole Hall of Fame? Is this is this where you can look? Does this just show like real managers or something? I'm not really sure. Oh no, there's a regen manager. We don't have anyone on it. Oh, Mr. Perfect, he's seventh. He's the seventh best manager on the Hall of Fame. And Theo Armstrong, of course, manager of Chelsea City as well. The uh, 12th best manager of all time. So he managed to win a few things with Arsenal. But his most successful period was definitely with Chelsea City, as you can see there. So that's pretty fascinating in itself. Robert as well, he managed Chelsea City, didn't he? Didn't win anything with them. Assuming it's the same Robert, of course. Anyway, we'll hide the caretakers. And you can see all the managers over recent years. Uh, Daryl Foster. I uh, know, we're going, going from here. Lee Davies, sorry. Lee Davies didn't last particularly long. Carlos Mata didn't last particularly long, and he was very young. Lucas Ryback, he, he lasted under a year as well. He's currently charged with Celtic. Gary Stubbs lasted two years. Didn't last that long, though. Uh, Brian Parler lasted only just over a year in charge of uh, Napoli now. And all of them were sacked. All of them were sacked. And the most recent manager has been in charge for, for three years. So finally, some consistency with Robin Thomason, a Dutch manager. He looks pretty good. Um, good to see him still here and, and surviving for a few years. So what have they won? Unfortunately, of course, they haven't won the Champions League because they didn't qualify. They haven't won the Premier League, but they finished third this year, which is good. FA Cup-wise, they have won it twice. So they managed to win the FA Cup in 2083, beating Aston Villa. They were then runners-up against Man City, runners-up against Arsenal before beating Newcastle in 2087. So finally winning a couple more FA Cups. So they've won five in total, runners-up six times. Uh, European Super Cup, runners-up, which means they won the Euro Cup for a third time in 2085. They beat PSG, really, really impressive. We've also seen Newcastle, Brighton, Sheffield Wednesday and Aston Villa manage to win the Euro Cup. So lots of dominance from the English teams. Carabao Cup-wise, they haven't managed to add to that. Uh, Community Shield, they did win that in 2083 after winning the FA Cup. Beat Chelsea. Runners-up as well in that one as well. Um, anything else? They, they, uh, they've won the uh, Under-19 Champions Cup 2019. Back into, yeah, 2075, as you can see there. And I think that's about it. There's a few youth competitions down here, as you can see. You can pause the video if you want to have a look in a bit more detail. So, overall, I think it's been a decent 10 years despite failing to qualify for the Champions League as much as they would like. This is the current squad. Uh, best player, Ryan Lynch. Who is that? He's that player, isn't he? That had really good potential. So yeah, came through the academy. 21 caps for England. Best player in the team. Second best player is Ryan Mayle. 34-year-old. Came through the Crystal Palace Academy goalkeeper. Uh, Dirk Arn is the next one. German international. Also came through the uh, Chelmsford City Youth Academy. So they've produced some decent players and they seem to be holding on to them a little bit more maybe. Of course, we saw Hong Wayne stay at the club for his entire career. 
but some of these guys are also sticking around which is nice to see maybe they're not quite they don't quite have the quality to move to one of the really big teams um you three players signed from uh, from Real Madrid this season don't know if they were unwanted players but yeah they they managed to get hold of some decent players here all right it's a bit slow now that we've got to this point in the save Ecuadorian international so they've signed some experience haven't they um but I won't look at all the seasons it once again I mean there's been a few seasons where they've spent a lot more money than they, they sold but this season loads loads of money going out of the club and it's been fairly equal in recent years I suppose so who's still at the club we still have Mr Perfect Director as the technical director at the age of 90 that is amazing I love it um who else we've we still got Mr Perfect Physio at the age of 90 as the head physio and Mr Perfect Analyst is still here at the age of 90 as well but I think that's it now yeah of course, Mr. Perfect, the original manager, has retired. They've got a lot more coach, coaches, scouts than, than we started off with. It took a few years, but after establish, establishing themselves as a Premier League club, they finally basically got the staff of a Premier League club. They, was, they were relying on quite a small staff previously, weren't they? And if we have a look at the facilities, still 1919, ah, they have an underwriter. So that might be why they suddenly finished 30. Although they didn't really, they spent money, but they sold a lot of players as well. So I don't know if he's just come in, this uh, underwriter. I'm not sure. Either way, that is possibly a positive sign ahead of the next 10 years, the last 10 years of this experiment. If we just have a look at a few things, by the way, competition, reputation, Premier League is top. If we go to clubs, Chelmsford City, they're up there, four and a half stars, but they're a long way behind some of these other clubs, of course. If we look at the finances, turnover, Man City at the top, no surprise there. Champs City 13th in England. Not the best, but considering they are 13th, they've, they've done well to finish third, haven't they? So realise Knox County got to the top flight relegated, unfortunately, but they've, they've actually spent... A, oh, they only got promoted last year, but lots, many seasons in the championship, finally promoted, relegated, unfortunately, at the first attempt. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday still doing well. Man United back into the top seven. Aston Villa doing well. Liverpool champions. These are the last few winners. So Liverpool have managed to win the league title a few times now. So have Man City. Chelsea have won it. That's mainly Liverpool and Man City. So I think we'll holiday another 10 seasons and see what's happened to Chelmsford City. So here we go then, the last update of this experiment. It's been a marathon, but it's been an enjoyable marathon. We're finally at 2,181 years after we started this experiment, and Chelmsford City are still a very established Premier League club. They're still occasionally qualifying for the Champions League. Unfortunately, they've only managed it twice since we last, uh, last had a look. So they finished fourth the following year, then sixth, 6th, 5th, 5th, 6th, all the way down to 8th, and then 3rd, three seasons ago, 5th, and most recently 7th, but still qualified for a European competition. Behind MK Dons, who've done really well, promoted, I think they had like a sugar daddy or something, and uh, they've, they've really turned into a very powerful Premier League club with four and a half star worldwide reputation. Really quite strange that. But I like the fact that you can get these interesting stories further down the line. And I mean, Spurs finishing 10th, Man United finishing 13th. They were relegated three seasons ago and then promoted at the first attempt. That's incredible. Man United, after all those years, relegated. Liverpool have gone on to dominate in recent years, as you can see. Considering they were relegated at one point, they have done well. But it did take them 80, was well, 80, 90 years to win that Premier League title, of course. But, of course, this is all about Champions City. So let's have a look at... What they've won, let's start with that. That's the main thing, isn't it? So, obviously, no more Premier League titles, but they they finished with eight Premier League titles to their name. And, of course, that was eight Premier League titles in nine seasons. Runners-up twice. Third place three times. Club World Championship third place twice. Euro Cup three times. Runners-up four times. So they were actually runners-up three times after winning it back in 2085 so that's a bit unlucky runners up to Brighton runners up to Real Madrid and runners up to Spurs MK Dons have won it twice incredible uh, but they did win the Euro Cup 2 
which is really good, I suppose. That's, that's better than nothing. Anyway, this is like the, the reserve Euro, Europa League thing that's been implemented. Uh, so the big Inter Milan in 2093. Uh, FA Cup-wise, just skipped over that. They've ended up with five wins. And they were runners-up in 2096. They really were runners-up far too many times. But at least they managed to win it five times. So that's good. Carabao Cup, they did win that in 2094. So that's good. Uh, they won that against Chelsea. And they were runners-up against Arsenal in 2096. Under-19 Champions Cup for a second time. That's nice to see. Under-23 Premier Division Cup. They won that uh, six times. Premier Division International Cup twice. Under-19 Premier Division Cup three times. So they've won quite a few youth competitions as well, which is really good to see. English FA Youth Cup a couple times. It's been, it has been a remarkable 80 years for them, hasn't it? Uh, these are their most recent managers. So they've been through them, haven't they, actually? So Thomason did retire before Castillo took charge. Uh, we then had Jose Luis, who's now in charge of MK Dons. At Amara, who's now in charge of Napoli. Brian Parlett, this is the second time he took charge of the club. John Smith took charge as well. Uh, Dan Whelan, who's now a coach, but he was in charge. He's just an interim manager, actually. So you do get interim managers on Football Manager 2020. And the most recent manager has just come in in the last nine days, actually. He looks pretty good, to be fair. They have been spending money, but once again, they've been selling loads. So they've not. the net spend isn't huge, is it, every single season? But in recent years, they've been spending more than they've been selling. Huge amounts spent. A um, couple seasons ago, in fact. So if, I mean, if we did continue this, if anyone wants to download the save file, which is in the description, by the way, if you download it and you might want to continue into the future and see what happens yourself, uh, then you're welcome to do that. Um, current situation at the club in terms of finances, 43 million in the bank, 76 million to spend, no sugar daddy. These are the facilities, 18, 18, 20, 20, 20. They've got a decent squad, two players with 175 current ability. You might want to take charge yourself and see what you can do with, with Champs of City. Of course, we've got to this point where the save file might be a bit slow, especially on not so good computers, maybe. I don't know. But you can give it a go. You're more than welcome to, of course. There might be some future stars in there. There's one decent player under 18s. Yeah, I mean, the club's not in the best position at the moment. They've got some really good players and you could do a lot with this club. You could probably finish Champions League easily with this squad. Whether you can win the league, I'm sure some of you could, some of you talented managers out there, I'm sure you man you'd be able to do that. Let's have a look at the records. So Hong Wayne ended up with the most league goals, by the way, for the club. Most expensive transfer ever was this chap, Ian Race, who's now retired, but he, he moved for 126 million. Highest transfer received was Karadag. That's a long time ago now, back in 2059. Most goals in a season was Karadag. Most league appearances, Hong Wayne, no surprise there. Highest average rating in a season was this chap, Escobedo. Remember him? Interesting. Some interesting uh, records there. League positions over the years, of course. Uh, tendencies. Been the same for a long time. They, they could probably expand their stadium even more if they wanted to. Record transfer every single season, as you can see there. Highest transfer received every single season. Lots of money flying about. This is the best 11 then. So is there any new names in here? Gluk, Gluk, 25-year-old. Started at Champs City, who's in there. I mean, it, it seems a bit random sometimes, this, I think. Lynch has got into there. So he ended up with 89 caps for England, by the way. Moved to Arsenal for £58 million. Pounds. Uh, Galantinio, that's a different goalkeeper in there. Signed for £60 million. Pounds. Quite miraculously, Mr Perfect Director is still at the club. He's 100 years old and he's still here as the technical director. And even more miraculously, the head physio of Chumpster City is Mr. Perfect Physio, who is also, of course, 100 years old. <laughs> A head physio at the age of 100. Hilarious. And lastly, Mr. Perfect Analyst is still here. So there's three surviving members of that original board. Of course, Mr. Perfect Director did leave at one point and we moved him back as, te as technical director. But Mr. Perfect Physio and Mr. Perfect Analyst have stayed. They've remained at the club for their entire career. And Mr. Perfect Physio hasn't really ever earned a huge amount. It's only on £1,800 a week. And he's never been on more than that. Uh, Mr. Perfect Analyst has managed to increase his, his wage quite significantly over the years. But that is that is really quite an achievement, isn't it? I love that. And fans of uh, Regen Rovers, my Regen Rovers series, Jack Young. 
data analyst. Blast from the past. Oh, who are the affiliated clubs these days? Hamilton Waterlooville, Huddersfield in the champion in League One, sorry. Uh, Prubram in Czech Republic, uh, Reading in the Championship, and STVV from Belgium. So those are the current affili affiliates. Uh, what else do we need to look? Oh yes, of course, legends. So Mr. Perfect has managed to go up to that legend list finally. Um, Escobedo, Nathan, Caradag. Where is Long? Why is Long Wayne only an icon? That is ridiculous. Yeah, Theo Armstrong only an icon. That is also ridiculous. Um, he finally retired, by the way, at the age of 68. Uh, who else? Sabuti's on there. Luke Cameron. Yeah, there's a few names that we know, of course. And current player Richard White is on there as well as a favoured personnel. Um, they have developed rivalries throughout this experiment. So, of course, we started with only Braintree being the fierce rivals. We had Billericke as a, a local rival. But Chelsea have developed into being a competitive, fierce rival, which is intriguing. Um, it doesn't work both ways, though. They're, they're not fierce in return. Chelsea City fans, though, do not like Chelsea by the looks of it. Newcastle, also a competitive rival. But, and they're also on the Newcastle list, by the way, Chumps of City. So that's interesting. Which, I mean, there's nothing local about that whatsoever. It's just competitive. Same with Liverpool. Competitive. Um, if we have a look at them, they're also on there. It's because they've been in the top four for so long, or they were winning titles at one point, that they developed these rivalries. That's what happens in Football Manager these days. The last few games, there's di di dynamic rivalries. I think that's what it's called. So Man City also. Arsenal. Also on that list. Um, does it go both ways? Yes, it does. Is, I'm, Chelsea definitely not on there. Did I miss them? Let's have a look at Chelsea again. Millwall, Spurs, Liverpool, West Ham, Arsenal, Fulham, Man United. Yeah, no one else on there. Chelsea City, not reciprocated. Um, Villa are still there. Aston Villa as well on that list. Um, but that that isn't reciprocated. And then Concord Rangers, one of the original ones, can be Island team. So that, that's really quite interesting, actually. Those are facilities. Did I already look at that? I can't remember what I've already looked at, to be honest. I think we'll end just by taking a look at some of the major tournaments around the world. So start with the World Cup. Who Those are the recent winners. We've seen England win it tw three times, four times. Um, Chile have won it. Spain have won three of the last four. Scotland won it. Oh, wow. How did I miss that? Scotland beat Holland in 2062. Amazing achievement. 40 years later, 38th in the world rankings. But once upon a time, they were up there. England, I imagine, are towards the top still these days. First. First in the world rankings. Are there any Chumps of City players in the squad? No, there's not. But Chumps of City are still the fifth ma most major club in England, which is great to see. There's four five-star reputation clubs above them, which is why it's going to be difficult for them to get back up to that standard. But to be up there... At the end, in 2100, is very, very impressive. Along with Villa, MK Dons, Everton, Newcastle, Man United all the way down here. Four-star reputation club these days. West Ham, dropped off. I mean, Chelmsford City are the team in Essex that you, you're going to support. World rankings, for, for those of you interested. Uh, competitions, Premier League is the top, uh, yeah, top league in the, in the world. Uh, we've got the World Cup, European Championships. Um, you, sorry, European Champions Cup. Euro the Champions League, as you as you all know it. Those have been the recent winners. So Liverpool have won it a couple of times. Man City have won it. Atletico Madrid most recently. It's a long time ago since Chelsea City were successful. 2061, 2065. It's a whole generation. Two generations ago, really. Maybe the glory days will return to them one day, for those of you that do continue into the future. Sorry, my voice is going. I've been sort of... These videos take a long time to record. A lot of talking involved. European Football Championships... Uh, France won it three times in a row. Scotland have won it twice. England have won it. Austria, Spain, Italy. But Scotland and Austria stands out as, as the most interesting winners there. Scotland twice winning it. How did I not see this before? Did I not look at this back, back, back when Mr. Perfect was England manager? I can't remember. But either way, they won it twice. Club World Championship, obviously dominated by European clubs. No surprise there. The Scottish Cup is up there. What is going on there? The Scottish Cup and the Swiss Cup four-star reputation cup competition above the English FA Cup. That is incredible. I love it. I love that. that that's just really random. The FA Cup is below the Portuguese, Austrian, Brazilian, Swiss and Scottish Cups. Amazing. Club-wise, 
these are the top clubs. I don't know if it's the world or yeah, it is the world actually. Chumps is City uh, will be down here. They're, you know, they're in in amongst lots of other big teams. Max attendance. So Barcelona, 104,000 seater stadium. Real Madrid second. Chumps is City down here but I mean it's impressive that they went from a 12,500 seater stadium up to a 61,566 seater stadium in all these years uh, yeah impressive stuff financially let's have a look at the turnover again to Arsenal 565 million Champs Chumps are ninth biggest turnover season ticket holders seventh largest number not bad Ticket price, what's this? Uh, Trump's City 46 pounds, they're pretty expensive, aren't they, actually? Looking at that. Uh, season ticket price, they're also pretty expensive. Look at Arsenal and Spurs, crazy. A golden ball. We did see Chumps of City win this. Long Wayne actually won it. Oh, I love that. He won the he won the Ballon d'Or. We saw Escobedo win it, Sabuti, Caradag won it for Chumps of City. So a few, four, was that four or five different players managed to win this? I love the fact that Long Wayne won it, though. He is the, the best player that Champs City produced. He went through the academy. These other chaps didn't. But Champs City produced a Ballon d'Or winning player thanks to these perfect facilities. I mean, that is one of the, the best outcomes of this experiment, actually. Managing to produce that talent. I wonder if Adrian Upson... No, he didn't start here. Just, just intrigued. There might be some others. That's the thing. There might be some English players or even non-English because of course they produce lots of players that actually came through the Champs of City Academy um, but were, I mean I'd be searching all day to, to find out but I, I love that I really do World Player of the Year I think he probably won that yes he did he won that as well um, Football of the Year is sometimes a little bit different but we did see Champs of City players win that Nathan Sabuti Escobedo won it um, I think that's it Look, looking at that uh, world Team of the Year. Let's look at the overall World Team of the Year. So there's no Champs of City players in there, unfortunately. Uh, there might have been if we looked 30 years ago, but not right now. Under-21 Footballer of the Year. Any Champs of City players? Yes. Um, this chap won it. He's retired now, of course. Chris Tafaro. He managed to win it in 2065. Uh, I'm surprised Long Wayne didn't win it, considering the talent that he turned into. Goalkeeper of the Year. Champs of City players in here. Oh, yes. Yang Hee. Yeah, Yang He managed to feature. German international. 158 caps for Germany, by the way. That is impressive. Inevitably, I've forgotten to look at something. I, I generally do, and I do apologise, but I think we'll end it there. That is the story of Champs of City, then, with perfect facilities and perfect staff. We've still got three of the original staff members here. They've turned into a worldwide power. Yes, they've not really featured in the Champions League much in recent years but I do think they I think I had a look and when they qualified for the Champions League most recently they did actually reach the quarterfinal so when they do reach the Champions League and qualify they do well in it they've, they've managed to reach the, the, the final final eight club so that's not bad going at all so uh, that I'm, I'm really pleased with the progress they made and I'm so pleased that they they managed to win the Premier League all those times and the Champions League they won the treble one year I think which is really impressive and of course, if you do want to continue with this, there is the save file in the description below. You can take charge. You can fire Chelsea City back to the glory days of the 60s. Or alternatively, you could just holiday into the future and let me know what happens to Chelsea City post 2100. Of course, um, they've still got good facilities, and, but they don't have perfect staff anymore apart from three. So you could always change that if you like the effect of them of those perfect facilities and staff members have worn off worn off a long time ago but we, we turned them into this this club but they could in theory dramatically decline just like we've seen man united and liverpool get relegated chumps of city could happen to them as well at some point if we don't do anything but it would be interesting to to find out if, if any of you do holiday into the future let me know what happens i would be really intrigued to know but it's been been fantastic thank you thank you for watching this thank you for all the likes thank you for all the views it's been been a, a great christmas series actually this was released at christmas some of you might be watching this in the future so of course irrelevant to you but yeah thank you for the last few weeks how many weeks in fact when did i upload part one i've lost track of time i can't remember the last couple of weeks anyway been been great thank you uh i've said thank you enough until next time enjoy fm20 enjoy the rest of your day i'll see you very soon